Hello, we're happy that you're viewing this video. We have performed online training for over three years now, and we've really learned a lot in the process. A high-speed internet connection is required in order for you to view this video or to participate in our interactive online classes. This video is an introduction to our web-based training. We have three different types of web-based training. One, live online courses during which you can interact directly with the instructor. Two, on-demand classes that you can view 24-7. And three, custom online courses conducted specifically for your agency. Each course includes a downloadable PowerPoint presentation and any applicable forms, manuals, or easy steps guides related to the topic. At the end of each on-demand course, the registered participant can print a certificate of completion to document the training. All of our classes are affordable and allow you to receive classroom training without the cost or loss of time associated with travel. Today's video is an excerpt from the on-demand class, Fair Housing, Processing and Tracking Reasonable Accommodation Request. Today's topics are going to include defining reasonable accommodations and reasonable modifications. How are they similar and how are they different? Who, when, and how a request for an accommodation or modification may be made. How do you document the request? And then what are the procedures or step-by-steps for processing that request? We'll later cover approvals and denials. Who pays for the accommodation or modification in public housing? Who pays for it in the Housing Choice Voucher Program? Remember, in the Housing Choice Voucher Program, we have another party involved, the private landlord. Then we'll talk about tracking and reporting reasonable accommodations and reasonable modification requests. Class materials that are provided and can be downloaded uh, include the reasonable accommodation request form. Even though we provide a form for requesting reasonable accommodations or modifications, and your policy may state that, that, that the request has to be in writing, the courts have upheld that the request does not have to be in writing. Once that request is out there, even if it is just provided directly to a maintenance person, it's there and you have to take action on that request. So you will need to start the tracking process by maybe filling out the form yourself and noting that, it was, that the request was made orally to whom and when. We'll talk about denying the request. Under what circumstances can you deny a request? And when do you need to open up communications with the, the participant or tenant to see if maybe an, an alternative accommodation or modification would be acceptable to them? We'll talk about living aids. What is a living aid? The need for a living aid? And the class material provided for that include request and verification forms, as well as a live-in aid lease addendum. Because remember, the live-in aid is not a party to the dwelling lease and has no right to remain in the unit when the tenant vacates. Well, there's a process log for the participant file where you will track from the beginning initiation of that request all the way down through the grievance process if one is involved. Then there's a summary log where you'll record all of the reasonable accommodation requests for each property and for the PHA as a whole. We'll talk about the uh, reasonable accommodation transfer list, which should be made, maintained both by property and PHA as a whole, the verification of need for the reasonable accommodation, and the verification of handicap. All of these forms are important, and you certainly don't have to use the sample forms provided. But should you have a fair housing review, every one of the forms that are listed here and that are available for download will be requested by the fair housing reviewer. So what's the difference between a reasonable accommodation and a reasonable modification? A reasonable accommodation is a change to your policies 
procedures, rules, practices, services that are needed by a person with a disability in order to fully enjoy the housing provided. Reasonable modification involves a structural change needed by a person with a disability. This could be for a common area, such as your community room, your office, even a playground or sidewalk or curb, or it could be for the dwelling unit itself. In processing the request, remember that the request initiates the process. Once that request is made, you must process it, even if that request is made orally, okay? Next question, is this person a person with a disability? Because re reasonable accommodations and modifications are only available to the disabled or handicapped persons. Is there a connection or a nexus between the disability and the request? For example, if I'm a hearing impaired person, I may request a motion sensor porch light so that I would know if someone was outside my unit at night. Once I get that porch light, my neighbor may request one because she likes the convenience of it. But my neighbor isn't a person with disabilities, so therefore you could deny her request. However, if she makes the request, you need to do the same processing as you would for a person with disabilities, but instead of approving it, you would deny it. And then lastly, is the request reasonable? Okay, that's just to give you an example of how the system works. Please go to www.nelrod.com and click on the link to Training Courses. There you'll find a list of the, the available courses and their descriptions. For a limited time, use the code on the side panel to receive a discount on the on-demand courses. Thank you for listening to this sample video. Don't forget to write down the promo code for that great discount, and I look forward to seeing you in class.